Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning, we're going to talk about how to sell your car. This is part one of a two part series. So let's jump right into it. So depending on whether you decided to get a loan on your vehicle and you have paid it off over a period of time or paid cash for it up front, or you have decided to take on a lease that you hand back the keys at the end of the lease, you basically have a different level of responsibility in regards to selling that vehicle at the end of its useful life for you. So with a lease, of course, you're returning the keys, you're uh, taking on the brunt of the fees and so on and so forth, but you have a convenience factor that's that's factored in for that lease uh, and being able to just hand the keys back. Whereas when you are purchasing a vehicle and at the end of its useful life for you, you own that asset or at least you have paid down that asset to the point where you can sell it. And, uh, and at that point, you have to be able to sell that vehicle. So I wanted to jump into how to best do that. So let's take a look at three aspects of selling your vehicle. The first one comes down to preparation. The second one comes down to platform. And the third one comes down to presentation. So we're going to look at these three components and when it relates to how to best sell your vehicle. So before looking at these three aspects, you'll first want to look at whether you own your vehicle outright, which simplifies the process, or whether you have a loan on a vehicle you've purchased or a lease on a vehicle that you have leased. So going through that process, starting from a standpoint of knowing where you stand with that vehicle, looking at if you do have a loan, how much you owe on that loan, or if you have a lease, how much the buyout is on that lease. So you can obviously contact either your financial institution or look at your most recent statement to find that out. But the first step of the process is looking at what the book value is of your vehicle. Now we've already done an episode on this, uh, almost like a deep dive into how to look at your book value. But as a reminder, you will be looking at NADA.com or KBB.com, which is Kelly Blue Book, in order to figure out what the book value is of your vehicle before you go into the process of writing up the description and listing it for sale and negotiating it and so on and so forth. Now, the second step comes down to figuring out what the market value is. The market value is what other people are willingly paying for that vehicle. So you'll be able to get an idea of what vehicles are selling for that, that compare to your vehicle by using a resource like cargurus.com, autotrader.com, autotempest.com, cars.com, any of those platforms, looking at and narrowing down comparables within your region uh, that, uh, that you'll be able to compare uh, directly to your vehicle will help you understand, okay, what's the market value of my vehicle? Now, again, I did do an episode specifically on market value and figuring out what your car is worth from that standpoint. Uh, but it's important for you to first look at the, the book value and second, look at the market value before you go on and move further into this process. So once you've looked at the book value of your vehicle, once you've looked at the market value of your vehicle, you will then look at listing your vehicle. Now, listing your vehicle would mean that you are selling a private party. So you may or may not be comfortable with doing that from a safety standpoint or from you know a, a region that you live in or something like that. So you'll want to consider, okay, what would it cost to uh, to either trade in that vehicle, what would the trade in value be, or just selling it to a CarMax or a Carvana who buy vehicles even if you don't buy theirs. So you'll want to look at these options, but I would encourage you to sell a private party if it is safe to do so in order to ensure that you're not leaving money on the table. And why I say that is typically you're going to get significantly less for your vehicle by selling it to a dealership who will then mark it up or trading it into a dealership who will then sell it at auction or mark it up and sell it on their own lot. So you'll want to keep that in mind that they're going to make money off of your trade-in or off of the vehicle you sell to them. And so you will want to consider what it would look like to sell at private party. So I'm all about automating the aspects of life that you can automate, but being that this purchase is typically the second largest purchase people make, 
I encourage you to be involved in the process, even if you don't enjoy the process. And I say that because it's important for you to understand what it is that you are signing for, what it is you are buying, what the terms are of that new vehicle purchase, and then also be able to be in the process of selling your vehicle and, and going through the process of, of knowing what it's worth and, uh, and then being able to understand, okay, what am I spending my money on or where did my money go when it came to purchasing a vehicle and selling it for less down the road because of depreciation. So you'll want to consider those components and you'll want to be involved in that process so that you understand the process because on average, people typically replace the cars every six or seven years. And so you'll go through a number of cars during your lifetime and you want to know how this process works. So jumping right into these three aspects, the first one comes down to preparation. Now, preparation is exactly what you would anticipate it being. Going through the process of looking at your vehicle related accessories and documentation. So looking at what items you have, whether in physical storage or in digital format uh, that you have for that vehicle. So that could be any kind of maintenance records. It could be a title if your vehicle is paid off. It could be a bill of sale uh, for that vehicle when you go to sell it, uh, depending on the state. Uh, it could be a notice of vehicle sold form, uh, depending on the state. It could also be something as simple as a wheel lock to get the wheels off if you uh, have a flat tire. It could be a third row seat uh, in an SUV that you've put into a garage or a storage unit accordingly. Or it could simply just be a trailer hitch or a roof rack or something like that that is detached in a certain time of year and reattached at another time of the year. And so you want to look at preparing that vehicle by having all of those accessories, all that documentation, the service records and, and those types of things gathered so that when you list your vehicle, you're actually prepared to show the vehicle. You're actually prepared with all the components of the vehicle to put your best foot forward. Okay, so one thing to note with regards to preparation comes down to looking at accessories you may have added to that vehicle that do not actually add value. So those vehicle um, accessories that may not add value to someone else, maybe a brush guard or maybe side steps, maybe uh, the larger tires and wheels you put on it or a roof rack or something like that. But what I encourage people to do is to look at the vehicle and what it's valued at, then look at the accessories you've added on. And if the accessories add value uh, that is comparable or more than what they would cost, then leave it in, in with the vehicle. And if not, if it's something that's, um, that you're going to get far less for those accessories, then separating them out and selling them individually, then do that. So in the preparation process, you're going to want to not only give yourself as the seller, but also the buyer a level of peace of mind. So if the vehicle is still under warranty, still under a bumper to bumper or powertrain warranty, you may want to take the vehicle into the dealership and, and be able to look at and have them do a uh, multi-point inspection, a, a pre-purchase inspection to look over the vehicle, figure out what things would qualify under the warranty to go ahead and take care of. They may be fit and finish aspects or uh, premature wear uh, and tear on the vehicle that uh, are covered under warranty that would better improve uh, the how the vehicle presents when it comes to a, uh, a buyer. And that will also give you peace of mind knowing that there's nothing major going on with the vehicle before you go ahead and transfer that title. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.